We get a fabulous Rougeau Brothers video package, and boy, did we. They're driving around Quebec. This was so bizarre. <laughs> there wasn't even a story. No. The they, story was they, they went drive skiing. around, yeah. then they go water skiing, and then they really want to show one of them doing tricks, yeah. mm-hmm. and then it just cuts away. So, And by God, how long were they on that fucking boat? They're on this goddamn boat. <laughs> it's like a four-man video package. the cameraman's, you know, he's like, he films Jacques for a long time. He's not even fucking doing anything. He's standing there, like, driving the boat. Or I think it was Ray driving the boat. Then he goes to Ray, and he just, they, we just look at him for a long time. And I'm like, is anything going to fucking happen in this video? And then they get another shot of Jacques from below, and we're looking up at his goddamn nipple. I'm like, okay, what the fuck do I need to see his fucking nipple and hairy chest for? Then they cut to the other guy, and the camera's just on him for a long time. Yep. I'm like, yeah. is this a three-hour show? And then finally it shows him water skiing or something. Yes. Okay. Water, water, is it customary to wear a water wing around your waist when you're water skiing? I, I, I don't know. Everything Brian said is true. Play it safe. And yet he's leaving a lot of this out. Oh, how they came up out of the water for the water skiing backwards. They were skiing backwards with their asses popping up yep, out of the water. Yeah, you just saw you saw three humps in the water, like the fucking Loch Ness Monster. Yes. But then the humps turn into asses. Yes. And then the asses turn into men yes. who were bent over backwards in the water it's water skiing. Exactly what happened. Then they turn around, and then it's time to see tricks. Ray does some tricks. Ray is like, Hops I'm going to go wake forward. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to go backwards. Now I'm going to go forwards again. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to go side to side. Now you're leaving out. I'm like, do they do a water skiing gimmick? What the fuck are these Rougeaus? <laughs> you are leaving out the preamble to all this. Gorilla says, we're on the, some shoreline in, in, in Quebec. And we see a Lincoln. Does Quebec even have a shoreline? I don't think so. This is a lake. But uh, I thought they were in Florida. <laughs> we saw, I mean, it probably was. But uh, they, they, we see a Lincoln town car. Backing a boat in the water. Of course it was. The Rizzo's aren't on it. Then we see Jacques and Ray drive up motorcycles. Didn't Buddy have a Lincoln Town car? He, uh, eventually. He was, I, I think he was so proud to it, get that Lincoln Town car. He talked about it like for years. 2009 or yeah. something. <laughs> so he talked about it for years, how much he wanted one. Yes. That was a true status symbol. Yes. And then he found one slightly used he could afford, <laughs> yeah. and he bought a 18-foot car in, in 2000, whatever. Yes. So, uh, so uh, the Rizzo's show up on motorcycles. They shake hands with some men wearing very short shorts. They're, Why? Who are those guys? I think they had the boat. I think there was oh, a bar they boat. rented the boat. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. Somewhere in here, as we're driving around, the camera like shows a church. It's a very nice yeah. old stone church. It's a very cool. Looking They're baby stuff. faces. Yeah, yeah. And it shows the church. And it shows the church. And it shows the church. Yeah. And it shows the church. It's just a, like an 18 second shot of this building. So then they go out in the water, and you talked about all the skiing and the asses popping out of the water. All I can think was, I need more wrestlers in the world personality profiles like this. Just being dudes. Bizarre. Bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. Just being totally crazy fuckers. Yes. Yes. I laughed a lot watching I did too. Mm-hmm. It brought me joy. It brought me joy. The Killer Bees versus Terry Gibbs and shirtless Jack Foley from Bloomington, Indiana. Here, here is where we noticed he this. was. He was about five months into his career. Yeah, just got out of wrestling school. Yeah, trunks didn't fit. He's mm-hmm. constantly adjusting them yeah. to the point the announcers are like, "The fuck's wrong with this guy's tights?" Johnny V buried him deep. <laughs> oh my god, Johnny V was on fire in the show. He buried him. This he guy like, should be mowing the lawn. He should be walking the dog, pulling his britches up. Uh, he's pale, he's ugly, he's out of shape, his pants don't fit, his missing teeth. Yeah, I don't know if, they, like, where did he lose those teeth? Was it dynamite? I thought it was, I thought he lost his teeth like as a kid. Like, he may the roof. Hmm. All I know is, is he'd been doing this about four months, he'd been doing jobs, and on one of the jobs, Dynamite Kid, like, gave him a clothesline to the face and just fucking about killed him. Mm. So, you know, he kept wrestling, and then he does this match here, and uh, he gets a bee's ass, like, right to his fucking face and neck. I thought he was dead. And uh, and he kept going. He refused to quit. What well, was the finish. I know. I'm yeah. talking about his career. Oh, I see. Yes, yes, yes. If I got fucking clothesline in the face by Dynamite Kid and then had an ass dropped on my head yes. and neck, I'd be done. So the, Out the, of there. The killer bee's finish, you now call it a flying hip attack, or at least an assisted one. because They call it the rear view. Now, now they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe this actually gets renamed as the bee sting. 
down the line. But uh, Brian Blair jumps off Jim Brunzel's back. They have a blunt ass. <laughs> There's no stinger. Well, they're they're bees. Pretend. I see. Just pretend. And yes, uh, he he jumps off his partner's back, leaps high in the air, and he hits Foley with his ass, and that's all well and good. But then he comes down ass first on Foley's face. <laughs> yeah, mm. God. Uh, so brutal. That mm. There were bumps between that and just some other terrible technique he had. He looked more beat up in this match than Hell in the Cell. It was so bad. He literally sat on Foley's face. Yes. Also, the, the bees are doing the mask gimmick. They didn't do it here, but they had the masks with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, even without the masks, Gorilla can't tell them apart. Right. Even though one has a mustache and the other does not. Anyway, after the match, the Killer Bees did an awesome jumping high five. Where Jim Brunzel's whole gimmick is that he's jumping. He was a high jumper, you'll note. And they jumped high in the air and high five. That's the whitest white guys you ever saw. Resnick interviews Bobby Heenan and Mr. Wonderful, who do the exact same promo they did in the snake pit 20 minutes ago. Next week, Coco Ware, King Harley Race, the Honky Tonk Man's debut, and the British Bulldogs versus Nikolai Volkov and the Iron Sheik. And then, of course, the special musical review, which never gets old. And I was so happy because the giant machine's judo chop made the highlight reel. <laughs> that was worth seeing a third time. That was that. And that was a show, everybody. Mm-hmm. That was a show. Fun show. Thank God we get one more week and we get to uh, see old Honky. Make his uh, babyface debut in WWF. Maybe he turns heel the first night. I don't know. I don't. I have, I have no memory whatsoever of babyface honky tonk man. So I guess we'll see. Except when he was when he was older and working for Tim. I have no idea. I have no remembrance of him debuting. He was just always there. Well, you're gonna see it next week, brother. The debut of old honky. Sean sent us pictures of uh, Mr. Wonderful's hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Horrible. There it is. Hideous. But I, I, I try, I'm trying to find, uh, this is my homework assignment, to find another man who had his haircut. <laughs> lots and lots uh, look, of Look at the guy, for, you know who has that haircut? He-Man, Anton actually. Anton Chigurh, or whatever his name, from No Country yeah, for Old Men. very close, too, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. But the, the original He-Man from that same era had the exact same hairdo. He actually, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Maybe they stole it from Mr. Wonderful. That's entirely possible. Yeah. That second picture that you sent us, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's, is, is that the Toronto show? There's a giant crowd. It looks like a windy day. And he's got a he's got a a, a cow lick. Yes, on top of everything the, else. The aforementioned Sam Malone had the same haircut and shears. It, that that's not unusual at all. Wow. What was a unique hairstyle worn by men in the '60s? Pompadour. Mop and conk, whatever what? that is. I beg your pardon. Excuse Mop me. And, Cock and, and pump. Conk. Say that yeah, one more time. Nobody else talk. Pop and conk? Yeah. Are you sure, Granny? Read it again. Mev O P Mop Comma Conk. Mop Conk. Mop Conk? Conk. C O N K. Okay. Look it up. Okay. All right. Mop Conk? Mop Conk? That's two different things. I know. <laughs> God damn it. Duh. <laughs> Why is she mad at us? Because <laughs> we're idiots. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.